Hi friends, I'm back with chapter three of April, April Adventures, the Calendar Mysteries. Chapter three, hissing and buzzing. Bradley felt goosebumps tickle the hairs on his arms. He stood still like the fish statue in the fountain. He didn't dare to look down. Do snapping turtles hiss, he wondered. Could there be a snake near his feet? When he didn't hear any, no, any more hissing, Bradley looked down. No snapping turtle, no snake that he could see. Then he noticed something out on the pond. Two swans were floating on the water. They were big and white with orange bills. The swans watched Bradley. One of them flapped its wide wings and hissed again. Bradley grinned. He waved at the swans. Happy Easter, swans! The swans kept hissing. The other one let out a, lar a loud snort. Okay, I'll leave, Bradley said. He stepped away from the pond, watching the ground, keeping an eye on the swans. He walked all the way around the pond. He saw three caterpillars and a frog, but no eggs. No turtle or snakes either. Bradley noticed something dark sticking up from the reeds near the pond. He stepped closer. It was a tree stump that was black and dead. On the top of the stump was a red plastic Easter egg. Bradley grabbed the egg. I found one, he yelled. He ran back towards the rose garden with the egg. The other three kids were standing near the fountain. We did too, Nate said. He and Brian each held a plastic egg. Now we have four, Bradley said. He held his egg near his ears and shook it. Something inside is, it rattled. Something inside it rattled. When Bradley pulled the two halves apart, he found jelly beans. Just like in my dream, he said. What dream, Lucy asked. Bradley told his brother and friends about the candy meadow with chocolate milk in the stream. Cool, Nate said. He found a candy kiss inside the egg he was holding. Brian's egg held a small cookie. They ate their prizes and put the eggs into Lucy's basket. No one has found the real eggs, though, Lucy said. Let's keep looking, Bradley said. They were standing under a tall oak tree. Maybe if I climb up high, I'll be able to see eggs down on the ground, Lucy said. Here, hold this. Lucy handed the basket to Bradley and started climbing the oak tree. The boys watched her use her hands, feet, and arms as she moved higher. She's like a monkey, Nate said. See any eggs? Bradley called up to Lucy. Not yet, she called back, but I can see our houses. Lucy started climbing down. She was on a lower branch when she yelled, there's one egg up here. Where? Can you get it? Nate called up to her. I think so. Lucy wrapped her legs, wrapped her legs and one arm around the branch. With her free hand, she reached into a hollow place on the branch, in the branch. She pulled out the plastic egg. Here's number five, she cried. Bradley held up the basket and Lucy placed the egg in among the others. Then she swung down to the ground. Open it, Bradley said. Lucy did, and she found a shiny dime. No fair, she gets money, Brian said. The others laughed. If you'd climbed the tree, you'd gotten the dime, Lucy said, grinning. Okay, what's next, Nate asked. We checked the whole park. The notes di didn't say all the eggs would be in the park, Bradley said. He glanced around. Some may be hidden over by the high school or the elementary school. Nate and I will check the high school grounds, Brian said. He and Nate took off running. Come on, Lucy, Bradley said. They headed past the band shell towards Silver Circle. They walked onto the lawn that surrounded their school. They both kept their eyes down, but saw no eggs in the grass. If you were the shadow, where would you hide the eggs? Lucy asked Bradley. Bradley headed towards some playground equipment. Over there, he said. They jogged to the swing set. There was a, also a jungle gym, a seesaw, and a merry-go-round. Bradley put the basket on the ground and sat on the swing. But I don't see any eggs, he said. Lucy was on her knees, peering under the merry-go-round. Well, I do. She said she reached under and pulled out, out a blue egg. Way to go, Bradley yelled. That's the sixth egg. Lucy opened the egg. Yum, pink jelly beans. She offered one to Bradley and ate the other one. 
Bradley jumped off the swing and helped Lucy search. They didn't discover any more eggs in. Then Lucy noticed something. What's that little house, she asked. She was pointing towards the playhouse. It was behind some hedges next to the school building. That's for the kindergarten kids, Bradley said. They play in it at recess time. Let's go check it out, Lucy said. Bradley grabbed the basket and they ran over. The playhouse had a small door and two windows. There were flower boxes in front of the windows holding plastic flowers. Lucy crawled inside the playhouse. Brad Bradley, this is cool, she said. Come on in. Bradley got down on his knees and followed Lucy. Inside, he saw some tiny furniture. There was a play stove, a little round table, and four miniature chairs. Bradley pulled open the stove, stove's oven door. Look, he yelled. They are in the little house. A green plastic egg sat in the oven. Number seven. Bradley found a dime inside the egg. Ha, huh, my brother's going to be so jealous. He put the dime in his pocket and the egg in Lucy's basket. Lucy found egg number eight in one of the window flower boxes. Inside was a small roll of stickers. They searched everywhere else, but didn't find any more eggs. Outside the playhouse, they heard someone yelling. Brian and Nate were running towards them from the high school. They were both shouting and waving their arms. Can you hear what they're saying? Bradley asked Lucy. I think Nate is yelling, please, Lucy said. I thought I heard my brother say knees, Bradley said. By then, Brian and Nate were almost to the playhouse. Their faces were red and their eyes were big. I don't know what's chasing them. Bees! They both screamed. Oh no. Chapter 4. What's in Mr. Pocket's pocket? What happened? Brian asked. Brian poked a bee's nest, Nate yelled. He and Brian flopped on the ground out of breath. Did you get stung? Lucy asked. No, we ran too fast, Brian said. Did you find any eggs? Bradley asked. Nate grinned. Yeah, we found two on the baseball field, he said. He and Brian each pulled a plastic egg from their pockets. They were on the pitcher's mound and home plate. They had candy kisses inside, Brian said, rubbing his belly. So we've got ten eggs so far, Lucy said, but we haven't found a real egg yet. Nate and Brian put their eggs into the basket with the others. Where haven't we looked, Bradley asked. How about over there, Lucy asked. Not far from the playhouse were some wooden farm animals. There were ducks and chickens, cow, cow, sheep, goats, and ponies. The animals had been painted to look real. The four kids ran over to make believe to the make-believe farm. They looked behind the wooden animals and in the grass where they stood. Nothing, Brian said. Wait, I see something. Bradley yelled. Oh, man, look where they found it. <laughs> He looked inside the goat's mouth where, and there was a plastic egg. This is number 11. Bradley found a cookie inside the egg and ate it. Lucy soon found another egg. It was under the hen. In its make-believe nest, inside, a tiny inside was a tiny plastic mirror. The kids put the eggs in Lucy's basket. We have all 12 plastic eggs, she said, but we still don't have the real ones. I don't know where else to look, Bradley said. Maybe the eggs hatched, Nate said, and the little chickens ran away. Talking about eggs is making me hungry, Brian said. Let's go home and eat breakfast. The kids hiked up Eagle Lane toward Bradley and Brian's house. The sun over the trees made them squint their eyes. They clumped up the back steps and walked into the kitchen. Dink, Josh, and Ruth Rose were making breakfast. A bowl of pancake batter sat on a, the counter. Pal sat near Josh's feet, watching him. Pancakes, yum, yum, Brian said. I'm starving. Josh put his fingers on his lips. Shh, Mom and Dad are still sleeping, he said. The four kids pulled their sneakers, pulled off their sneakers as quietly as they could. Where have you guys been, Josh went on. He looked upset. Searching for these, Lucy said. She set that egg basket on the table. Plastic eggs, Dink said. 
Where'd you get those? You know where we found them because you hid them, Newt said. You left notes on our pillows. Notes on your pillows, Ruth Rose asked. What do you mean? Inside plastic eggs, Lucy added. How would we do that, Josh asked. Because you three are the shadow, Brian cried. He pulled out his note. This is printed off your computer, Josh. Josh laughed. Okay, we're busted, he said. So we did it. So how many eggs did you find? All of them, Nate said. Dink, Josh, and Ruth Rose looked in the basket. I only count 12, Dink said. We couldn't find the four real, egg, real ones, Lucy said. Do we still get the treasure, Brian asked. No way, Josh said. Wash your hands and let's eat. The four younger kids washed up, then pulled the chairs to the table. Soon all seven were gobbling up pancakes and drinking juice. So where did you hide the real eggs, Bradley asked. Should we tell them, Josh asked, Dink and Ruth Rose. The other two nodded. You know that sign telling people not to feed the swans, Josh asked. The four younger kids nodded. Well, the real eggs were on the ground next to the sign, Dink said. You didn't see them? Nope, Bradley said, and I would have because I was standing right next to the sign. That's funny, Dink said. I put them in the grass by the sign. Maybe someone stole them, Brian said. Ruth Rose grinned. The mystery of the green lawn egg thief, she said. How exciting, Josh cracked. Anyone want an egg any extra syrup, Dink asked. There, were, there was someone else in the park, Lucy said. The man with the little dog. Yeah, Mr. Pocket, Nate said. I saw him pick some up something. I don't think he'd steal Easter eggs from kids, Bradley said. But maybe he just saw the eggs and picked them up, Brian said. What did they look like, Josh? We hard boiled them, then painted them gold, Josh said. The seven kids looked at each other. Golden eggs, Lucy said. Anyone would grab one. Hurry up, Bradley said. I know where Mr. Pocket lives. I'm going to pause on chapter five and come back. Who do you think took the eggs? Do you think Mr. Pocket took the eggs or do you think someone else took the eggs? I don't know where the eggs are. We'll come back and find out when we read chapter five.